Okay, so this talks about uh, improving net dump hardware support and performance with ITLIB. So really the talk name should be improving net dump performance. Also, I worked on IFLIB. Because <laughs> the use of IFLIB did not actually improve the performance. Or that wasn't what I tested anyway. Um, so who am I? Uh, my name is Sam Gwider. Uh, I used to work at, oh, I don't even say the place. I used to have another job. Um, and I was a systems engineer. Um, and one of my main problems, which is why I've been on this like core dump quest for now like two years, I think, which hopefully is the end, um, was that I had a bunch of machines that didn't have swap because it got misprovisioned. So um, since we were running databases on them, uh, the DBAs didn't want to like reprovision these machines because they didn't think getting a core dump was important, even though they were crashing. Um, so I was like, OK, how do you get a core dump with no swap. Well, you can dump to Zvol if you're using ZFS, and we were, or net dump. So that sort of started this odyssey. Um, currently, I have another job uh, that I do disclose. I work at Joyent. Um, it's a cloud provider. Um, so right now, we are kind of devising a hypervisor solution, and a new hypervisor solution. And FreeBSD might be part of that. And we have the same problem, right? We have tons and tons of memory, like over a terabyte on a lot of the machines. And having a terabyte of swap, or even if you compress it, having 500 gigabytes of swap is just kind of ridiculous. So maybe we could use NetDump and sell that storage instead. So some background. So if you don't know what a core dump is, you're in the right place. Uh, a machine readable form of the state of a machine at some point in time, usually after a panic, which is what I copy and pasted from Wikipedia, um, which is probably not going to help you. Um, basically, when your computer crashes, it dumps out all your memory into, well, first into swap and then later into a file that you can load into a debugger and kind of poke around at the state of your machine when it crashed. And hopefully you can figure out what went wrong. And specifically, when I say a core dump, a lot of people differentiate between crash dump and core dump. And core dump, they say, is for a process, and crash dump is a, a kernel. But I don't. So I don't know. Uh, so the standard dump process, uh, like I said, you take all your RAM, you dump it out to, this is a swap partition, your dump device. When you reboot, a process called save core runs and takes that dump out of swap, puts it into a file in var slash crash. Uh, this is the format of it in swap. Uh, there's a longer talk about all this that explains that why this is at the end and all that. So that's stashed in swap to persist Yeah. Okay. And then, so I'll say why it's, why it's at the end then. So like, uh, if you have fisk run, like before your your back to uh, multi-user mode. Um, it uses swap, I guess, to, to move things around. So it, it might use this space right here and maybe some other things. So to increase your chances of like having a, a solid, uh, that's not what I want to say. Not a, <laughs> um, a consistent dump, I guess. Uh, it's an unfortunate word. Um, uh, it's place toward the end. So hopefully you can use some of this. You know. I haven't run into that problem yet. And I was doing great. I got four slides in. We need a new name. OK. So what's NetDump? Well, it's the same thing, but uh, you transmit instead of, instead of sending the dump to swap uh, on your hard disk, you send it to another server. And it does everything for you. You, can, you don't have to store it on your local disk. And then you don't have to play the swap game, which was great. Uh, especially for my, for my purposes. And so there's two sides to this, a client and a server. But I decided to go to history first. Let's talk about this. OK. So the process looks the same, but it's in green. Um, so you, you go from memory, and you dump to a set of reserved pages of, of memory that you're just always keeping stashed away, uh, blank. So you can dump out to that 
and then once you've crashed, you use that as a like staging area kind of, and you you dump a chunk of memory out to that staging area, and then shoot off a bunch of UDP, UDP packets with uh, netdump send uh, at your netdump server, so the netdump daemon on another machine, and then that writes it straight out to var slash crash. So it's pretty similar process, but it's just across two machines now. Um, and then I go into what you get out of your, like in, in var slash crash. It's the same stuff you get for a normal crash dump. I'm gonna come back to that history um, in a second. Okay, so the setup's pretty easy. You can use dump on like you use to configure um, all the other kinds of dumps, I guess. Um, you tell it uh, where the server is. Uh, if you're using a gateway that isn't just the server, you tell it that. Um, and then since it's like, since you're not using the normal uh, TCP IP stack or networking stack at all, you tell it what your like desired IP is. Um, and then the uh, interface you want to use. Um, I think it's still the case. You're the guy to ask, Mark. But is, is it still the case that you have to dump on slash dev null first? Yeah. Why is that? It, that that's just how you say really works. Okay. Okay. I don't think there's any really good reason for that. Yeah. I guess it is kind of important. Um, I probably should have said up front because I'm going to do it. <laughs> Uh, if you want to like stop me and ask questions, go ahead. Uh, I don't think this talk fills up an hour, so like let's try our best. <laughs> um, yeah, so you have to reset it, and then you set your uh, dump configuration. Um, and the server setup is pretty easy. Uh, dash D is just how I run it. If you're running it as a daemon, you wouldn't you wouldn't do that. Uh, dash D puts it in the foreground, and so you can watch it. Um, there's some other settings. I've never actually used them. Uh, there's a whole man page if you'd like to read that. Um, OK, so now let's go back and do some history. OK, so in the early 2000s, uh, a guy named Daryl Anderson um, started working on uh, a net dump at Duke. Um, then this kind of has like limped along and gotten updated over the years at, at Sandvine and then now at Isilon which is where Mark's at, so that's why I talked to him. Um, and then uh, as of like 2017, I guess, uh, while I was at Groupon, so I, I have disclosed what my former job was. Uh, <laughs> uh, there were patches floating around, but they weren't ported to 11. Mark had, Mark had something and finally sent it to me. Um, and this kind of gives you a, a timeline of what this looks like. This is all the different dump devices. Um, so last year I had this big like, Compendium on core dumps, I guess. There's just huge like history of all of it, and so here's here's all here's part of that. Uh, you if you can't. You can't. Oh, you still can't. No, I don't, no, you can't. Can't. Aww. T T T. Um, I wish though. Yeah. That'd be great. I don't think actually. Yeah, I say pre Unix, so you can't. You couldn't ever do it. Is text dump different? Yeah, I, I wish text dump was that. <laughs> yeah, you can technically print it. You just pipe it to LB. It's like yeah, it's, that's my line printer. Um, but yeah, so most people is just swap, and then this is dashed. Until, it shouldn't be dashed anymore because this is finally upstreamed. Um, okay, so the first time I gave this talk, I guess, was in April, and so I wanted to give the status. Uh, so at the time, support for NetDump, uh, NetDump has to be supported directly by the driver, uh, was only in BG, EM, IGB, and VMX. Um, and NetDumpD was uncapsicumized. And then Mark would uh, serve as Moyle and capsicumize it. Um, <laughs> as of June 2018, uh, Mark's done a lot of work. <laughs> uh, so I'm presenting mostly what he's done until later. But uh, he's added uh, iflib support, which gets you a lot of these. Uh, iflib supports like a bunch of different drivers, and it's like a, um, I don't even know how to explain it, but like it's like a general driver for a lot of different um, network interfaces, so you don't have to duplicate code. Um, and importantly, VTNet 
uh, support was added, so now you can uh, debug using Beehive, which is great. Um, so I did actually try my hand at, at porting to iflib and was successful until I emailed Mark and was like, hey, I did this. And he was like, cool, yeah, me too, like two weeks ago. <laughs> uh, but that was great. He did a better job. Mine was slower. I actually tested it. Um, OK. Um, and so now uh, uh, NetDump supports all the neat goodies we have in, in FreeBSD now, which is so compression, uh, encryption, and NetDumpD is capitalized, like I said. So it's a little more, what, sandboxed, I guess? OK, motivation and problem. Um, so Cordons are an important debugging tool for kernel development. Um, so you definitely want them. But uh, swap enough to fit, swap large enough to fit cores from large memory systems are impractical, especially if you're running on flash storage. You don't want to be like dedicating a terabyte of flash to a core dump. That's crazy. Um, and cloud host providers are attempting to sell as much of the storage on the machine they can. That's how they make money. Uh, so you want to keep the minimal amount of space you can for that you need. And, and sell the rest of it. So you'd much rather have like a dedicated dump server and just net dump and you're, you're good to go. So the problem. So net dump is super practical and it exists, which is great, but it can be slow. Um, and especially in the face of packet loss. Hopefully you don't have that much packet loss in your data center, but if you're dumping out like a terabyte of memory over um, maybe your management interface, which might be like a gigabit, um, if you lose a packet in there, it, it matters. And if you're losing several, it matters more. <laughs> um, so what's the goal? My goal is to improve net dump performance um, to something reasonable for uh, cores about a terabyte in size. Um, uh, one of them was to add support for IFLIB. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> um, and then really my goal is to learn about IFLIB and network drivers. Uh, network code in general, and kernel development. So the design. OK, so the NetDump client code has to run in panic context, which means you don't get all the goodies that you normally have. Um, so you don't have interrupts. Um, so you have to pull your, your NIC. Uh, you don't have dynamic memory allocation. So you have to do that reserved segment I was talking about before. Um, you have no access to the normal TCP IP stacks. So you have to use your own. Um, uh, the client needs to be simple, because uh, you don't want to panic in your client, which is what I fear when the herd's asking for a live demo, that I'm, that's somehow going to happen. Um, I don't think that even could happen, but it will today. Um, and importantly, uh, one thing to keep in mind is that the NetDump server has the full capabilities of a normal server. So like what you need to do, or what you can aim to do if you want to do fancy things, is push all the complexity into the server and have this like dumb, simple client that maybe can have these really cool features because his friend, the server, is doing all the, all the heavy lifting. Oh, there needs a space there. OK, um, so a panic server is the NetDump client. And then a server running NetDumpD is a NetDump server. Um, this is basically the man page broken down. But the, the NetDump client is configured with dump on, like I said before. And upon panic, the NetDump client spins up, dumps to a reserved segment of memory a chunk at a time, and then that, that segment is transmitted by your little UDP stack in your NetDump client. Um, here I break down the steps in a little more detail. Um, I don't really want to go over it that way. So I won't. Um, so now, specific problems. So the, the IP is statically configured, right? So you, you configure this IP. And, and if you have one server, this is fine, right? You can always like, make sure to, to keep that updated. But if you have tons of servers, and your network's changing all the time, maybe you want. Uh, a DNS name instead. You know, maybe you want dump.joint.com is your your net dump server or something. Um, currently, that's not possible. Uh, also, I configured having you can specify a host name. Really? 
I haven't tried this. <laughs> yeah. When? But does it look at dump on time? Like when you run dump on? Yeah. So It'd be nice if it did it like right before, but that's hard to do. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I guess that's reasonable. Yeah, right. Yeah, you actually run it to some of the infinite loop over and over again. That's great. I didn't. I hadn't tried that. Yeah. Uh, okay. Cool. Um, yeah, it's it's changed a lot. I think since since the patches I originally had, which I originally wrote these against. But um, so yeah, you can do that now. Great. <laughs> um, there's a fixed window size. Um, so currently, the, the, the window, if you'll call it that, that's being nice at, at this moment, um, is a 64-byte ant, and, you, and you, just, you just knock off which packets you've, you've sent and received, and that's how you tell what you need to retransmit. Um, what we, or I guess I'm going to go over the solutions to these problems later, but so that's not great. Um, it doesn't deal with packet loss well related to that. Um, it slows down dramatically in the face of packet loss. Uh, over like 1% packet loss, the whole thing kind of just falls apart, and you're not going to get your dump. Um, I've never, you can turn it up to where it just will never time out, but I've never had the patience. Um, the, the server doesn't scale, so if you get multiple streams, um, <laughs> It's good. It's good. It's good. Uh, maybe if I plug in power real quick, it won't go to sleep. Okay. Okay. Um, so if you have multiple streams at once dumping to your your server, say all all your cra all your servers are crashing except your dump server, of course, and, uh, and they're all streaming to it as fast as they possibly can, you're going to start dropping packets, which will cause this problem we went over. So it, what we want is, is the net dump server to either be able to say, like, hold up, like, I'm not finished with these other guys, or, like, everybody slow down to, like, 1 over n speed. Um, it didn't support, or it doesn't support all NICs. Um, so net dump support is implemented per driver, uh, I guess except iflib, uh, because it's sort of like a meta driver. Uh, and then it's IPv4 only. So how, what does MTU do they use? Does it have a, like a hardcoded 1500? Just 1500. Or does it use whatever? I think it'll use what you set. Yeah. But there's a, a 4K limit in there, that net dump data size. So if you do like a jumbo frame. Yeah. Yeah, I think it won't get bigger than that, unless I'm reading it wrong. Because you remember when it goes to it sets the packet line to min these yeah. two things. Yeah. Yeah, that's literally what the comment says, and I'm like, why is this arbitrary? I, I could try it out. I don't have anything that has, like, I don't have jumbo frames set up anywhere. I didn't mean to make this slide bigger. <laughs> no, that's great. That's what I'm looking for. Um, yeah, it'd be, I mean, it'd be great if it had jumbo frame support, right? Because you're transmitting just like gigantic things. Um, so, solutions for these, these problems. Um, so, teach net dump to resolve DNS. That already happened, apparently. Um, Multiple streams, teach net dump to support multiple streams, just like, or either decide that everybody should slow down or that you should just take one in order. Um, but just some way of, of, of dealing with that. Um, it's IBV4 only. I don't, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to put IBV6. Uh, you guys can do that, though. Uh, it doesn't deal with packet loss well in the fixed window size. So that's the performance section. Um, and doesn't support all NICs, well, if lib support would help, and it did. So, like I said, I, I tried my hand at porting to if lib, and I wanted to like 
relay my experience because I have far less experience than Mark does. So it might be interesting to hear from somebody less experienced. Um, so like I've said many times. Um, but I feel like my experience is interesting. So I started with Mark's patches um, from probably like two years ago now, a while ago. Um, um, and, and then started to do a port to Iflin. And like I said, so each, each driver has to implement um, these hooks for NetDump to use. Um, so adding those to IFLIB was sort of my, my goal. And I based the work off of the EM driver. So the EM already had, EM driver already had a NetDump support. And I sort of just did like a line by line translation, just sort of as dumb as I could be and just working from there. Um, and there's a couple things I ran into. So the IFLIB documentation is, is incomplete. Um, there's a couple man pages, but until recently, I didn't take down the date, but until Benno, Benno put up this uh, IFLIB man page, uh, there wasn't one man page that linked the others. So you might, if you did like man IFLIB, you find nothing, and you might assume there is no documentation. But actually, you did it from you. <laughs> actually, it's hidden, yes. Yeah, it's to, that's to cast out the noobs, you know? You, have, you must be this experienced. It actually had IFLIB in it. I thought it was like IFDB something. It, it, it might have been. Like yeah. I think you're right. <laughs> so, yeah, it's even worse at some point. Um, but now there's this meta man page that kind of says, here's all the others. <laughs> uh, so yeah, there's, there's three main ones, the device dependent um, functions, the device independent functions, and then the transmit and receive ones. Um, one of the things that's missing though, and I, I didn't really, I've never actually seen this in any man page, but uh, documentation for all the KOB stuff, if you're just coming into like kernel development, you are not going to know that ahead of time. You're not going to be like, oh, this makes sense to me. Um, so th there's some chaos okay, parts of IFLIB. Like, I only th think I needed like one function, but it was, it was hard to figure out that that's what I needed. I found this thing that was named what I wanted, but I was like, I don't know. I just had to try it. Um, I can go look. <laughs> We're going to have extra time. We'll see. I'll go find it, though. And it's in all caps, right? Shouldn't be hard to find. <laughs> um, yeah, so it was mostly simple, actually. If it, like, even though it wasn't documented well, it was pretty easy to use, which was nice. Um, I was mostly just translating EM directly into to the IFLIB driver, and it mostly maintained the same sort of structure. Um, the one thing I missed for like a week or two was the magic go button, because um, I like had it all set up and I just couldn't get anything, even trash, to transmit. And I finally, Matt Macy finally pointed me the right way. Um, and I found it. Um, so here's like the difference between like the EM driver and the IFLIB driver for like one of the net dump functions. It's pretty, it's pretty simple. Um, it looks like this one's more complicated, but I think there's just more returns. Um, but yeah, once, once you kind of delve in there, it was mostly just like translating line by line, which is great, because that's what IFLIB's supposed to be, right? It's supposed to be this easy way to, to not have to rewrite entire drivers from scratch, I guess I should say. OK, so now performance. OK, so this is a very, very simple look at, at what the NetDump client is doing. But um, the NetDump dumper function is a, is a callback that the, the dump code uses to dump a chunk of memory um, to, I guess, whatever device you're going to be using. Um, and so it dumps out a chunk to your observed memory section up to 2 to the 16 bytes. Um, and so first it dumps out the core dump header, and then the core itself, and then a, a trailer, I guess. Um, and then you net dump send that segment and do this all over again. Um, so net dump send transmits up to 64 packets of up to MTU size. Um, 
and then so it, it shoots out 64 packets, and then it sits and waits for all 64 packets, and um, it'll pull the NIC up to 2,000 times. Uh, you can set this, but up to 2,000 times to check for all those acts. If it gets all 64, great, you're done, and then you you kind of loop back around. But if you don't, that's when the trouble begins. Um, so if, you, if you've dropped one of these packets, uh, you, you have a zero somewhere in this bit field. And so the, your, your expected acts and your, your transmitted acts are, are different. So it's going to go back, loop up, and transmit those again. Um, and it will do that up to 10 times. And then each time, it does this two, these 2,000 pulls. So this can take a bunch of time. This is why performance just absolutely tanks. Uh, there's 64 packets it shoots out, up to. Right, so, so the, the client sends 64 packets. Yeah. And then the server sends 64 acts. Yeah. Why doesn't it just send one? Um, yeah, so that's thus the performance improvements. <laughs> right. So that's the... So like it seems like you could just use one act for all 64. That's just coming. Yeah. You, that's like cumulative acts. Yeah. Um, that's that's so that's exactly what what's exactly what we're going to talk about. Um, I didn't change that yet, but that's the <laughs> so right now it's just I, I slide I have slides on this, but I slide the the 64 uh, packets along like a larger buffer because right now you only I should have a slide that really talks about this well or like a, I should have like a diagram, but right now there's only ever up to 64 packets. And if, if what you're sending is, is less than that, that's fine. But if it's bigger than that, or if these chunks are only ever that size or less. But what I do is I accumulate like a large amount in a, in a buffer and then shoot them off. Yeah, so. All of them, yeah, yeah. So that's, that's the way that bit field works. So you only actually retransmit like the holes, right? Oh. Uh, no, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> so yeah, it goes back. It's this bit field, right? And so it goes and looks for the zeros, and just says, "Okay, I'm going to send that one, that one, that one, that one," and then it pulls again, and then retries until you okay. until you get it right. Then 64x makes a lot of sense. Right, right. Um, but it would be nice. It does some other like inefficient things there. But it will always it'll always shoot out 64 packets as a, and it will never grow or shrink, which is sort of what needs to happen. That's not done yet, but that'd be great. Um, someone should do that. <laughs> um, that's actually like sort of the the end goal here. Um, but so there's a couple more. I guess I go on about like solutions, things I need to fix here. Go ahead. How yeah. Do you know that? Uh, it, how do you mean? How do I know? Fail or oh, well, so it never you can. It just well, if it's too bad, it never finishes. Um, you can set how 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 much you'll try before you quit. Um, there's two. This two thousand is like indie polls or something. Indie underscore polls, and that's how many times you'll pull the nick waiting for the sack. Um, and then uh, the 10 is like ND retries, so that's how many times you'll retry transmitting it. Um, and you can, you can bump those up as large as you want, but like, if it's going beyond these, you're, you're pretty hopeless. Uh, you'll see in my graphs later, I, I bump the retries way up in order to get these times to figure out like, okay, if you have 2% packet loss, how long does it take? I don't know. Yeah, it takes too long. We're still finding out. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's. Yeah, exactly. We'll get there once the sliding window is done. Um, so, there's a couple things we need to fix. Um, so, NetDump D doesn't keep performance stats. So, you don't know actually if you're improving things. So, that's one I added just like a simple thing, which is just like how long did this take? So, I can do average throughput. Um, uh, one thing I would want is like minimum, maximum, average throughput, maybe how many packets were lost in this in this transfer. Um, 
just other things for some like verbose mode would be great. Um, so the problem of not dealing with packet loss well. So this has gone off the edge. We'll see if there's more. But um, there's a bunch of things we need to do here. So flow control. This is the sliding window we were talking about. Um, that's in progress. That's what so this talk is sort of mostly about. Um, I still need smarter window resizing. So it's, so it's just that 64 packets always still. Um, selective repeat is, is sort of something we have right now, but that'll go away um, if I change how that ACK is done. Um, to do that sliding window protocol like TCP does, which is probably more efficient, um, I'll have to sort of rewrite these. So I'll, I'll lose the features and have to re-implement them as I go. Um, and then also the window should be able to be huge. I want it to be just like gigantic. Because if I have like 100 gig cards, like I need 100 gigabits of stuff, you know? Um, and right now, 64K of stuff is just not cutting it. Um, reduce the NIC pull time. And even better would be, so it takes 500 milliseconds to, to pull the NIC, or you, you, you wait 500 milliseconds for packets to come in. It'd be great if we like figured out the RTT between the client and the server and then just said, OK, I'm going to wait that long, or maybe two times that long, instead of just an arbitrary 500 milliseconds. Um, and then congestion control uh, is not probably something I'm going to do, but it's probably something that should happen. Um, you, you might be taking, you're at least taking like one hop to, to your dump server, and hopefully not much more than that. But perhaps like there's some slowdown in your management um, network. And maybe, maybe the dump server can take 100 gigabits, but, but some host in the middle can't transfer. So it'd be nice congestion control. It would really help. Um, the server scaling issues, um, support for multiple streams would be great. It's not something I'm working on. Um, and then just raw throughput improvement. So this is probably where the biggest win is right now. Um, I'm going to see what's past the edge of this slide. Oh, God. I can't read any of that. Um, OK, so cinder size, <laughs> what does that say? It's automatic send buffer sizing. Yeah, so that's what I, that's what I want. Um, and then, so now I, I buffer a larger amount on the cinder side, so I can just shoot out, like, uh, if, if there's lots of small packets, I can put those together and not run really slow functions over and over again. And when you're sending the header, well, and and starting the dump process, you're sending these like tons and tons of really small packets, tons of 4K. Uh, the segment is only 4K. So if we just coalesce a bunch of those at once, I can more efficiently shoot those out at the uh, server. And so that's the big win. But automatically sizing that would be even better. Um, so before the perf work, these are horrible numbers to look at. So I, I wrote over here what we have. But it takes about nine seconds for a two gigabyte dump. Um, this is from two virtual machines over a, uh, so the setup is, is the client, a gateway, running dummy net, and the server. And dummy net, I'm, I set dummy net to have zero packet loss all the way to uh, I get to a tenth of a percent. One percent doesn't complete. Um, but so it takes nine seconds uh, at zero percent packet loss, and then 131 seconds at a, a tenth of a percent. Um, I also increased ND retries to 100 to be able to withstand more packet loss before giving up. And like I said, it was tested using dummy net. And VT net is probably important to point out. So this is on like a, a ThinkPad. Um, Doing it on like bigger hardware is, is to come. Um, and here's throughput. So you can see your throughput just absolutely tanks um, from 1773 megabits per second to 122. Um, so it gets from somewhere reasonable to somewhere not. Um, so after the performance work, um, mostly just do that send, sender side buffering. Um, we, we can dump two gigabytes in five seconds. And with uh, a tenth of a percent of packet loss within 50 seconds. And so less than a minute, 
Um, still times out for 1% packet loss or above. That's the sliding window stuff that I need to do. <laughs> um, and then, uh, like I said before, I increased ND retries. Um, it didn't really, you're not losing that many packets at this point. So there's like, I think I wrote it down somewhere, but like a little bit over 600,000 packets in a gigabyte um, with this MTU. With 1500 MTU. Um, so there's two gigabytes, so it's just not that many packets that you're going to be losing. And throughput again. Um, oh, I didn't write down the numbers. But um, I don't know. Not almost. From better to, From better to worse. <laughs> yeah. So I, I calculated I could do a, a terabyte in an hour with zero packet loss. And that's getting a little bit more reasonable than it was. Oh, here we are. Here, I wrote some things down now. OK. Um, so before the changes, uh, dumping via the gateway at, at 1773 megabits per second, but you can't exceed 1% packet loss. Um, with the performance changes up to 3,022 megabits per second, 1.7x improvement, um, mostly right now due to the accumulating of small packets in that SIM buffer. Um, so, like I said, the ability to withstand packet loss has not improved yet. That's definitely the like next project. Um, and I need like an automatically resizing window. It'd be great because then I can just focus on the packets that aren't getting act and really nail those down. Um, later, like I said, I need to test on beefier hardware because really uh, the machines that I I want to I want to be getting core dumps from are these multi-terabyte machines with, with 100 gig cards, so why not use that? Um, if I had access, I would. Um, uh, at work, we also use Smart Awesome and Illumos. Uh, it'd be cool if they had NetDump. They have every other feature, so they might as well have that. At least for core dumps, they have every other feature. Um, and then maybe just kind of abandon using a homegrown UDP stack altogether. Maybe just use like an embedded TCP IP stack like LWIP. Uh, there's more flexibility than just TCP features on, on UDP. Um, and it would be all correct. You know, it wouldn't be me maintaining this thing. Um, that would sort of defeat my goal of like learning this stuff for myself. But it is actually probably the right solution. I don't, I don't know how big of a job that is. Have you looked at anything like that? Yeah. Yeah. It'd be cool, but it's like a, it's like bigger than the dump code itself, so it kind of gets ridiculous to embed this whole stack just for this. All right, so thanks to Dan Langeal, the rest of the BSD Cam people, Matt Macy was a lot of help, Mark Johnson was a lot of help. Um, here's some links to Mark stuff. I should change that because this is upstream now. Um, my code's incoming. It's not very clean right now. And once I get that, maybe with that window, I'll be a little more proud and put it up. Um, that's about it. Uh, is there any questions? Everybody got them all out? All right. Oh, here we go. So the get Mm hmm. Uh, so you, yeah. Um, so if lib supports, I'm gonna look it up right now, but uh, oh, that's too bad. If lib supports a bunch of like Intel drivers and a couple others, um, so if you if you have if lib support, you get those for free instead of supporting each driver individually. So this is sort of the reason why. Uh, there was sort of that explosion in driver support, is that once you support iflib, you get like four or five different uh, drivers for free. Um, it's also like pretty easy to use and clean. What's up? And there's more drivers incoming. Right, and and so as more drivers are supported by iflib, you you get those for free as well. Oh, nice. Okay.
No, didn't. I was trying to be fancy. All right. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, it's loading. <laughs> all right, here we go. Does it list all the drivers? It doesn't. Yeah. Uh, Benno at IX Systems is actually writing an Aquantia driver for the Super 210 gig cards. Okay. So we may soon have that. Screen. Yeah, so it's sort of like an abstraction away from a single driver, which is really nice. And then, like, if, if someone goes through there, someone probably being Matt Macy goes through there and does perf work, uh, you get that for free. You know, any any bug fixes. It's It's really nice. And it's sort of like, a standardized way to implement these things, which is which is cool, especially as someone who didn't know how to do that before. <coughs> no. So what? I, so one thing I really wanted to do, and then I knew it was going to take too much time, was write a Wireshark. Um, oh, what do they call it? They have some word for it, but like basically, when you when you open up a packet in Wireshark and it shows you like all nice and formatted. A decomposer? I don't know. Anyway. Dissector. Dissector, yeah. Um, I want one of those so I can, so if I, if I am going to go and implement all these features, like it'll be much easier to, to um, debug. But maybe at that point is when I'll just start like injecting horrible shit and see what happens. Um, that's that's going to need to be all like the server, right? Trying to like deal with maybe multiple servers or multiple clients hitting it that might confuse it things like that are probably worth looking at yeah get the packet loss oh dummy net so dummy net is like a i guess it's part of ipfw and so i just say like um it was super easy i was glad it was because i wouldn't have time otherwise <laughs> um but you just say hey like when I when any traffic goes through, you just drop half of it, or drop whatever percent I give you, and it'll do that for you, which is nice. All right, do you want to see me crash it in the live demo? <laughs> Oh, weird. So, like a certain amount, like, a, like, like if it was out 16 gigs, but a box of 128 gig, which is you know whatever, and it just was getting corrupted or getting lost somewhere. If you can, um, like, figure out how to reproduce it, you should send it to me and Mark Johnson's right. very intrigued face back there. <laughs> Mark, you know Marcello? Uh, he's the one that ran into it. Well, we were using that dump because all I have on the system right now is like a single. I, I don't have good storage in the box, so we were using it to to get a dump. You know, for. Okay. So you're seeing problems. Yeah. So I think it's in a bad state, but if it's in an interesting bad state, we can look at it. Uh, let's see. No, it's not in a very interesting bad state right now. Um, so I'm messing with that that window, and I'm I'm like losing packets all over the place and just dropping them all over the floor. And that it's an off by one error. It, I wish it was off by one. Um, it's probably off by a little more than that. Um, that's too bad. Let me see. Actually, wait. Let me see if just dummy net is like turned up way too much. There you go. 
My goal is the opposite of that. <laughs> I know how to fill an arbitrary amount of time. Yeah, it's all all virtual. It's just probably not the most reliable way to get my numbers, but it works. Um, so you guys are free to go if you want.